Hey, good morning, everybody. We'll get started here. So welcome to what's new in machine safety. And at this point, I'm going to turn it over to George Fries, who's our safety specialist here at Rexel. George. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the what's new in machine safety. Uh, what I'm going to discuss this morning is about the uh, two new safety door switches, the 440G-EZ and the 440G-MZ. And also, uh, the newest item is the new 450L SIP safety light curtains. So we'll start out with, uh, with the uh, safety door switches. And like Scott said, if there's any questions, feel free to uh, ask. And this is uh, the 440G EZ, the electromagnetic safety switch. As you can see, it's uh, designed to enhance machine safety, help protect a work, working process from unplanned downtime. It's a non-contact interlocking switch with a locking function, power to lock. Uh, it goes with a PLE SEAL 3 for interlocking applications, 500 Newtons holding force, 50 milliseconds respond time, ease of installation and alignment, no tongue interlocks. Uh, it has mounting options, either surface or flush mount. It's IP67 rated enclosure. Uh, the benefits of it increase productivity, reduce long restart delays, reduce scrap, improve efficiency by minimizing downtime. It's also coming out soon if you've uh, heard, heard about the guard link technology. Uh, it's coming out with the uh, power to lock smart tap. So you'll be able to actually add that onto the guard link uh, technology. And the product overview, like I said, it's power to lock, 500 Newtons holding force uh, when it's energized. Uh, it actually has a 25 Newton holding force de-energized. So if you have one of those doors, partial body access, um, that uh, once it's de-energized or you go to open a, a uh, non-contact uh, safety switch and the door kind of swings open and you don't want that right away, this is actually will hold it in place with the uh, magnetism at 25 Newtons. Uh, it has the 24-volt uh, DC uh, and then uh, two PMP uh, output signal uh, switching device. As LEDs, uh, so you can see the statuses for locking, on-off, magnetic force is supplied. Uh, the OSSD green when OSSD is paired, on state red when the OSSD pairs off state. Uh, you also have ease alignment, RFID detection. So there's a, a pretty good tolerance of it if the door starts sagging and it's a little offset that it's still going to uh, hold and it's not going to give you a, uh, a false fault or something. Uh, and you can replace the actuator as a separate part number if needed. Like I said, the it's, uh, performance level E, SIL-3. It's also um, anodized aluminum. Uh, it has fiberglass reinforced PVC, IP67 rated. You can get this in the five pin micro or the A-pin micro. And the A-pin would have the auxiliary pin for door status. Market needs for this, customer pain points. You probably run into this, faster machine stop times. Uh, production process interruptions can result in defective product, high scrap cost, this help stays on that. The access time to the hazard must be longer than the stopping time of the machine. It's an RFID non-contact switch power to lock function. If control voltage is lost, the door can be opened. Uh, I recommend risk assessment is the key for this to let you know when and how that uh, is done safely. Uh, another thing, like I said, simplified installation alignment uh, eliminates the stab hazard from tongue actuators. So I wouldn't recommend this for a robotic cell, but uh, if there's production line where uh, you're running uh, bottling, canning, different things like that, this would work very well. And then this actually shows how the switch works. Uh, you can actually see the uh, over to the right, that would be the LED indicator. 
and then you have the different uh, sensing modes and what the indicators uh, lights would mean. And this actually gives you dimensions. So if you're wondering what size is this, can it fit where I need it? Uh, you can see the actuator is uh, 4.72 inches long, uh, not quite one inch thick. And uh, actually it's uh, 1.73 wide. And then the uh, sensor itself, it's 1.3 quarter inch, uh, 1.34 inches uh, thick. Uh, it actually uh, is 4.73 long and then 2.36 wide. So if you have an application, uh, this probably would fit pretty good on a door. And then you have the pinouts to the left. And that goes over the 440G easy. There's not a whole lot to it, but there's a lot of technology behind it. And then this is uh, the newest one, the uh, 440G MZ. This looks similar to the 440G LZ. Uh, LZ was a partial body access. This is actually a full body access guard locking safety switch. What, what is it? Suitable for medium to large guard doors, including guard doors where whole body access is safe guard areas possible. It's actually uh, embedded with guard link technology. Can actually go right on to a guard link system. It's uh, like I said, full size guard doors, uh, high holding force. Uh, where it could be used, robotic cells. Uh, I can uh, think of that as like a main one. Uh, anywhere you might have uh, high inertia, maybe saw blades, uh, cutting devices, different things like that and you don't want anybody to get access to that until this is actually um, signaled to open. And as you can see here, it's uh, rated SIL 3 PLE category four for door monitoring guard locking, 2,500 Newton holding force. Uh, it also has RFID technology, so you have that uh, misalignment tolerance and escape release, which actually the new one should be coming out with escape release uh, models uh, anytime. Uh, that's going to be a big plus for this one. Also, it's uh, the size of it works very well on on doors. As you can see here, I actually have the flexible actuator, and then the beveled metal front brace. Uh, the tongue rotates 360 degrees for mounting flexibility. If you look to the right, you can see it can actually X, Y axis. You can actually, it, it'll actually move bend up, down, sideways, or actually spin. So it's pretty flexible. And then you can see the bevel on the left side, the bevel actuator openings on this, uh, on three different sides. So, so it's pretty uh, flexible on how you would mount the actual actuator. And I talked about guard link technology is something that we can discuss later on, or if you would like me uh, uh, to give you more information or have a discussion, uh, you can always send me an email. Uh, I put that at the beginning and I actually have it at the end and I can go further into the guard link technology. But uh, what's happening here is all of these are starting to use that type of technology. So you have, um, ease of use and ease of mounting. Now here's the newest one, the 450L guard shield safety light curtains uh, with uh, SIP safety, safety over ethernet. What is it? The introduction on this, you can see on top, uh, that's actually the uh, module that would be inserted into the light curtain, which is to the right, the 450L-E, and you would set your IP address on that. That in turn would be then connected uh, to the uh, receiver on the uh, 450L-ENETR, and also your transmitter would be uh, on the right. You have your power, the link, 
the interface module is uh, pretty slim, uh, easy to mount anywhere out in the field on your uh, production line. And then you're running Ethernet right from that instead of running cables from your light curtains all the way back, you'd run it right to this module here and then run your Ethernet cable back. It could be used for new installations or retrofitting existing installations if you have older light curtains and you want to get more information. Um, you need to use the 450L with uh, firmware 5.002 or above into the smart safety sensor. It enables communication of diagnostic status information to logic systems. It enables SIP safety over Ethernet. Uh, supports DLR to cascade multiple 450Ls or other Ethernet IP products. Uh, allows configuration of 450L with Studio 5000, which is a big plus. Uh, has the AOP for that, makes it very easy. Reduces system cost, reduction in wiring of safety circuit, and increased flexibility and modularity of system design safety zone. I actually have a, a demo that if you'd like to see this, how it works, I can actually uh, set an appointment with you. Uh, anybody wants to see this, I could bring it in, uh, let them take a look at it and see how it works. This is a close up. As you can see, you have the receiver indicators and the receiver on the left, uh, your Ethernet link one, and then your Ethernet link two uh, with indicators, your module indicator, your transmitter, your power. So everything's tied into that nice, nice little package. Uh, makes it very simple out there to mount. And uh, so you're not running 10 to 30 meter cables off your light curtains all the way back to your uh, panel. You're actually running it right to here, a uh, very short distance, and then running one Ethernet cable all the way back or to, to, a, to a hub. This is a uh, pretty slick technology. Here's the dimensions here. Uh, this actually shows uh, the length and then the width and then the thickness. So you can see this actually could be mounted right alongside of a uh, production line somewhere. Uh, whether you have different struts or different things like that, uh, that you can actually uh, mount these. And then you can see the uh, 450L APREN8. That's actually a plug-in module. Uh, nobody's ever seen the 450Ls. They actually use plug-in modules to make the receiver and transmitter of the light curtains. If you know what I'm talking about, then you can see this actually will go into the receiver and all the information from what's going on with the light curtains, diagnostics and et cetera, will end up going back right through Ethernet right into your uh, controls. Makes everything really slick, really uh, easy to use. Hey, George, we have a question in the chat here right now. <clears throat> okay. It says, can these, um, excuse me, can these modules be daisy chained? Uh, the light curtains themselves, yes, they can be cascaded and daisy chained. Uh, they actually have a uh, module that would plug into the bottom uh, of the uh, light curtain and daisy chain right off of that into the next set. So, yes, that can be done. Is there a limitation? Uh, that I'm not positive on, but I could find out. Okay, I just I'm just curious. That wasn't my question, but I, whether it be the number of uh, modules to be, you know, daisy chained or the distance, you know. Um, just I, I know somebody actually has done up to four four uh, set the light curtains off this, so um, I'm not sure the 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 maximum amount but I know four has been used. And then the uh, you can see the pin assignments. Uh, your transmitter is only a five pin. You're, uh, you're transmitting uh, uh, the actual uh, photo eyes. And then you have your receiver, the eight pin. So you can get all your different uh, information from that. But all that information is actually going into that module and then through ethernet. 
And this is actually an example of what the logic designer view would look like. You actually have your different, uh, your uh, light current status faults, restart required muting, uh, muting uh, request, diagnostics. So you can actually set these up uh, with your AOP right into Studio 5000. And uh, like I said, it makes everything a lot quicker, a lot easier uh, for installation. Uh, another thing these light curtains do uh, make it real easy is they actually have a, what I call a cascading, uh, when you set up, they actually have uh, LEDs, uh, laser lighting, that goes not just the one on top or bottom, it actually cascades down the side of the light curtain, so you can actually line these up quickly on both sides. Uh, that makes it real nice with these light curtains. Uh, that's kind of a uh, added feature that I uh, I added to this talk, but uh, I, I've set these up and they make it real simple to do. So actually, um, these are the newest products and I know this was short, condensed version, but uh, if anybody has any other questions or any other needs, you can actually, uh, my email address is right there. You can email me, uh, I can give you a phone call. Uh, we can go over this. I can actually uh, visit your site if you need be. I wanted to thank everybody for joining us today. And like I said, this uh, presentation will, uh, will be placed out on our YouTube channel later this week. So um, please frequent it. There's a lot of good presentations out there, not only from specialists from uh, Northeastern Ohio, but from all of the Rexel regions.